G'day folks, Michael from Doom and Darkness bringing you another instalment in the Realm Gate Wars. So we're doing the Hammers of Sigma Part 2 and um, I just want to say that uh, thanks very much for the continued request to continue this series because um, I certainly am intending to go through all of the books but when you guys ask me to uh, you know to make the next one it makes me make the next one sooner so um, thanks very much for the the small but avid following of this series now if you don't know what this series is this is basically where I go through and very poorly recount the events of the realm gate wars as they progress so I'm, unfortunately I've, I've finished all the books quite some time ago and my memory is a little bit shaky but the intention of this is not to uh, recount the story word for word or anything like that the idea is really to encourage you to go out and get these books because my recollection of the events is um, <laughs> far from accurate and has a, a slight interpretation you could, or bias you could say on it but um, I just sort of like to talk about the events and uh, give people who don't read the opportunity to follow along with the story progression of Age of Sigma and uh, I think a little bit of fluff in everyone's life makes everything a little bit better so uh, grab something to paint there are no uh, visuals here or anything I'm just going to be explaining the story to you and um, yeah I hope you sort of enjoy it we'll start off with a, a small little reading from the book and then I'll go through and sort of talk about the events now like I always say if I do get things wrong which inevitably I will feel free to uh, illuminate the viewers in the comments below as to the actual goings on goings on I'm pretty sure that's bad England right um, so just to give you a little bit of a, a rehash of where we're up to as well um, Vander's Hammerhand has come down with the Hammers of Sigma and fought Gorgas Cole, uh, Cole, Gorgas Cole on the uh, the Realm of Fire conquered that that was the first sort of entrance back into the realm the um, the Hallowed Knights have come down they've had a, a pretty epic war against sort of Nurgle and um, Galmaraz has been found so the Celestial Vindicators uh, led by Thostos Bladestorm um, and also then well he found the hammer and then it was himself and uh, Vandus that once again went and captured the hammer now since they've captured the hammer um, we don't know what's happened right so it's gone back to Sigma but we don't really know what the significance is or what's that's what that's going to mean um, we then went on to this book the hammers of Sigma and like I said part one of this book or book one of the hammers of Sigma I kind of felt was a bit disjointed and it didn't really tie into the previous sort of events I mean it was to capture a realm gate um, corns realm gate let alone so that's probably important but um, but it kind of didn't really tie in apart from that um, book two of the hammers of Sigma sort of uh, I suppose carries on from the existing story so let's just crack right on the prismatic king that title banged through the wing warriors thoughts as he smashed aside the brutish fighters to vanquish that tyrant was his cause yet with every step that took him nearer to the sorcerer the more his mind made him question disconnected memories and images rose up impressions of shadowy courtyards and mirrored halls foggy battlements and moats of boiling fire a sweep of his warhammer filled the wreckage of of a dozen spilled the wreckage of a dozen furred beastmen into the muck king or minion it was sufficient for the moment to know that the sorcerer was his foe the sorcerer fell back hurling its magic at the oncoming avenger its conjurations growing rapidly more desperate pelted against the golden plates of his adversary spells that should have melted organs enchantments that could have pulverized stone these sorceries simply dissipated as they drew near the warrior fading away like smoke the barrage of sorcery swelled into a storm of destruction raging clouds of flame immolated packs of marauders as the sorcerer loosed his power against the winged avenger crackling spears of black lightning seared through the herds of beastmen yet whatever havoc the magic wrought against incidental victims caught in its path upon the warrior himself they lost they lost their terrible potency a fierce bellow boomed over the lagoon the golder avenger swung around in time to face the charging one-eyed giant with a great leap he flung himself into the sky and away from the brute's path leaving his enemies to be crushed beneath the cyclopean titan's hooves and impaled upon its bovine horns 
The great beast turned, stamping and braying in frustration, furious at missing its prey. Angrily, it tore still wreathing bodies of men and monsters from its horns, rending them in its enormous claws. The warrior hovered in the air above the ox-headed giant. Before he could dive down upon the savage colossus, he was struck from a different quarter. Without warning, a slimy mass coiled about his leg, plucking him from the sky. He could see the obscene bulk of the toad creature, its tentacle-like tongues lashing about its fanged mouth. One of these noxious appendages had latched onto him, dragging him back into the mire towards the abominations more. Instead of struggling against the ropey tongue, the warrior propelled himself downwards, diving upon the toad monster with meteoric fury. The obscenity reared up, its clawed forelimbs raking in the air as it tried to swat its winged prey. Nimbly, the warrior dived between those flailing claws. Utterly uttering a mighty shout, he brought his warhammer crashing against the nearest of the toad beast's legs. The impact of the golden weapon sent a shudder pulsing through the swamp, causing the spine ferns to shiver on their tiny islands and flakes of iron to crumble from oxidized pillars. The reptilian brute reared back on its grisly hind legs, pouring at the sky with one of its forelimbs, while the other quivered as a mess of torn flesh and broken bone. The warrior scowled at the beast. The hammer should have wrought still greater destruction. He could feel the might of the weapon throbbing through his being, calling to him, urging him to loose its full power against the foe, to visit the truth, the vengeance of Sigma upon the spawn of chaos. The warrior raised his weapon to shatter the toad's ribs with a second blow of the warhammer. Instead, he was nearly bludgeoned by a monstrous tail of the creature, arcing over the beast's back. Driven by some dull instinct rather than any actual awareness, the mace-like tail struck again and again at the mire, blinding, pardon me, blindingly trying to destroy the one who had heard it. The warrior dodged the first strike, ducked beneath the crushing sweep of the second. On the third swing of the tail, the warrior met the spike bludgeon with the divine might of his own weapon. Sacred energies crackled across the hammerhead as he brought it slamming into the tail. A sickening, tearing sound, the meaty pop of severed tendons and torn sinew screamed across the swamp. The toad thing howled anew as the weapon was ripped free and sent spinning back into the creature. At the creature, I should say, slamming into its side and sinking its spikes deep into its slimy flesh. A fountain of blood sprayed from the broken tail as it whipped through the air in a spasm of pain. The warrior noticed a tremor ripple through the sludge around him, just before the giant came charging back to the attack. This time the brute attacked not with hoof and horn, but with a pair of spine ferns it had torn from one of the islands. Wrathfully, it brought one club slamming down with enough force to crack a mountain, sending a wide sheet of silver muck streaming upwards in an uncanny sluggish wave. The second club, get, club gouged a crater in the bottom of the lagoon. So folks, that's just a little bit of a reading. And uh, of course, what we're talking about here is uh, is the Celestine Prime. So um, what this book is about, how can I explain it? We start off with our hero. He just kind of appears, right? Just out of nowhere. And he kind of wakes up and it's a good old typical, oh, like, bro, where am I? Who am I? What am I here for? You know, so there's this sort of being, this warrior who's, you know, got these questions in his head and he, he, he's sort of lost his identity and all he knows is he's got this fucking kick-ass power and he can, it's, it, it's humming with the, the power of Sigma. He's got Galmaraz, he's got the Hammer of the God. But it's, it's, it's not too much sort of pondering and questioning himself before he hears the sound of battle and naturally he's just like, oh, bro, so what's going on over there? So he walks over and there are two Chaos armies having a war i'm pretty sure it's sort of like a beastman army against you know some other army or they're kind of just a, a mix of everything really um and there are two sorcerers that are fighting and when he sees these sorcerers it all sort of comes to him that um uh he whoever he is is here at the moment on this realm to find someone called the prismatic king and kill him right that's all he knows he doesn't know who he is he doesn't really know what's going on he's just like i'm strong i've got this hammer there's these two armies in front of me. Maybe one of these is the Prismatic King. I don't really know. Um, as soon as they see him, they're just like, ah, you know, the chaos pretty much stops fighting each other and just goes at him. And um, quite quickly, you start to see the power of the Celestine Prime as he just starts to smite both armies single-handedly by himself. Like he's just, they're just like charging at him and he's just laying about with his hammer and shit's just dying left, right and sender he you know the, the enemy's magic can't touch him he seems to be pretty much immune to that none of the weapons that these chaos guys have can 
hurt him at all. It just seems to bounce off him. And certainly um, he's able to take on, I think it's like a Saigor, a Gorgon and a Jabberslyth or something like that, um, you know, by himself. So he's certainly really strong. And, and the first introduction to him is very much him before he even knows who he is soloing two whole chaos sort of armies so you think right that sort of sets the scene i guess that sort of sets the power level right he is just like he's awesome <laughs> he truly is awesome so after soloing these two armies um he sort of starts to he doesn't learn who he is at all but all he knows is that he's in this world and he's got to stop the prismatic king so he's kind of flying around trying to get his bearings trying to work out what he should do and where he should go and he notices that he's being followed so he kind of ignores it for a while and then eventually you know he sort of sets a trap well not sets a trap but it makes sure he makes sure that he comes face to face with whoever is following him and lo and behold there is a lone wizard uh, a human wizard who has been following him all this time as he's been getting about and um, and this wizard's name is Thrall, uh, T-H-R-O-L. Now that kind of sounds like Thrall to me um, and it kind of makes me suspicious like there's just this wizard wandering around following the Lord Celestin. Um, hmm, the prismatic king is a wizard, you know, <laughs> right, whatever. But um, so he starts talking to Thrall and Thrall's like, oh dude, like, I'm the last surviving resistance of this land, basically. I, I was once a part of a, an empire called Shard, I think, and um, we were mighty beyond imagination, and the Prismatic King came here, and he absolutely cast us down and destroyed us. And um, and so the Celestine Prime is like, oh, brah, so like what you're telling me is that, like, you got destroyed and he's like yeah i got destroyed you know the prismatic king is this and that he's magic like um i never sort of imagined i used to try and oppose him but now i can't even cast a spell without him sort of knowing about it um thrall then tells him a story about uh stormcast eternals he says that there have been stormcast eternals here before you i have seen you before and when i saw their armies you know smiting chaos i had great hope but um, they went into something called the, it's, it's, it's terrible what it's called, um, it's so shit. Oh, I can't even find the, the thing now, but it's a maze. It's like the maze of reflection or something like that. Basically the, the storm host who are called the thrice blessed um, we're lured into this, you know, magical maze and um, that's meant to contain an artifact of great power and none of them were ever seen again. So it's kind of like straight away, honestly, guys, I was sort of reading this. I'm like, OK, well, there's this big guy he doesn't know where he is. And now all of a sudden there's this wizard showing up and now like just even the name, the prismatic king, I thought was lame. And now he's got to go through a maze. And I'm thinking to myself, I bet there's mirrors in this fucking maze and, um, you know, find his way to the prismatic king. It just sounds like, you know, the second episode of Conan or something. Um, I don't know. I, I probably wasn't really enjoying it that much. I mean, it was cool reading about this lesson prime, but I wasn't really into the story that much. Um, so anyways, he says, basically, this wizard says, listen, I can be your guide. I can show you around. And I can show you how to get to the Prismatic King. So off they go together, right? The Celestine Prime and this wizard called Thrall. Now, along the way, um, they hear some uh, some sounds of battle. And um, Celestine Prime goes over to check out what's going on. And he actually finds a small group of um, Stormcast fighting, you know, an army of beastmen. Well, when the Celestian Prime comes to their aid, the, the Chaos Army doesn't last very long, right? He just absolutely smashes them to bits. And he sort of finds out that um, these Stormcasts are actually some of the Thrice Blessed. So they all did go into this maze and they did get captured. But this small group were able to find a weakness in the maze and find their way out. Um, but by the time a handful of them had escaped, the maze had basically discovered that it had a weakness and it had fixed it, right? So the rest couldn't get out. So it's just a small group. And um, I suppose the main sort of character you really 
dealing with here. I mean, there are a bunch of cool little guys in this sort of group, but one of them is called, um, uh, it's like Juicius or something like that. I'm going to call him the Deuce. So the Deuce is kind of, you know, the leader of this group or one of the significant characters anyways. And they love like the Celestin Prime. They're sort of standing there talking to him and they're like, oh, bruh, like, what, who are you? And he's like, I don't know who I am. And they're like, oh, but you've got the hammer. What do we call you? And he's like, oh, I don't know what you call me. I don't even know my name. And they're like, well, you are the hammer. And so we're just going to call you Galmaraz. And from here on in, you're going to be Galmaraz. So from here on in, we're going to refer to him as Galmaraz. All right, so Galmaraz has now got a small band of uh, Stormcast with him from the Thrice Blessed. And their only mission is still to King. I mean, they want to get um, all their buddies back, the rest of the Storm host from this bloody maze. But um, this Lesson Prime, he's just like, man, we just got to kill the um, Prismatic King. And the Prismatic King is, you know, how Thrall talks about him, is that he is um, mega, mega powerful, right? His legions will, like, fill the skies. He is just... You know, like you couldn't fight his armies. If he brought all of his armies against Galmaraz and and you know, however many storm hosts, like there'd be no chances of um, of them winning. Winning. So Galmaraz kind of says, well, that's okay because if we have a small group of us and we lead basically an assassination attempt against him, um, he won't you know want to bring like his full legions to bear against such a small amount. He won't think it's as big a threat. Yada yada yada. It gives us the best chance. So Thrall's kind of like, well, that's all right. Then I, I kind of know where um, his hideout is so I can take you. So they head off, the small group, with um, Galmaraz to basically take on the Prismatic King. Now, the Prismatic King's hideout is this tower, and it's a teleporting tower. Of course it is. So it's sort of the, the Prismatic King moves it around at his will um, to a few different locations, but every X amount of time, it has to return automatically to um, where it was built, like the foundations of where the tower was built. So as long as they go there, they know that at some point the tower is going to reappear there, right? So off they go, tra la 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 la, and um, they get to the location where you know the the tower. I think they call it the Eerie, and um, I don't know. It was just like everything seemed to be cliched, right? It was like the Eerie, and it was like the Prismatic King, and Thrall and you know whatever else and it's just kind of like and the maze you know and you're just kind of like this is just I don't know it just seems too too stereotypical I I, yeah it sort of seemed a bit odd but um so they get to this location and it's basically an enormous lava plain and the tower is going to appear in the middle of the lava plain of course and um, it's extremely treacherous to get across there's no safe path across all this lava to get there um, but Thrall says, listen, guys, I can sort of use my magic and I can I can illuminate the safe way that you can get across. So the Eerie appears, it, it, the, the tower appears, and using Thrall's magic, they start sort of uh, transversing this lava terrain. Um, they get to the Eerie and, of course, uh, you know, they break in. It's all good. They're, and they come under attack. There's like Chaos Knights, there's Blue Horrors and shit, and it's all very Zenchy, right? It's all just Zench stuff attacking them. And they're just smashing their way through, smashing their way through, and um, Thrall's like, oh, I'll use my magic to light the way directly to the Prismatic King's throne room. And they're like, all right, sweet, no worries, let's go. So they're fighting their way through this eerie, trying to get to the Prismatic King. They finally get to this, you know, big door, big arch, and they're like, oh, it's through here. So they rush through, and then tra la 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 surprise they find themselves inside the maze right they've been tricked or they've been diverted the prismatic king has thwarted thrall's magic and um and sort of trapped them it's like you know they've been manipulated by zench oh, it was so clever so they're inside this maze and the maze is basically made of glass and mirrors and i'm just like fuck you couldn't get a more boring cliche sort of mage uh, uh, maze but anyway they're in this maze and then, you know, the mirrors are moving around and everyone's feeling a bit sick. Like, oh, I'm feeling nauseous. And they're like, oh, bro, have a sick bag. But um, what ends up happening is that, of course, trapped inside the maze 
are all the thrice blessed, right? So the storm host that went in there and the mirrors of the maze have the thrice blessed, um, you know, in there, they can see their reflections in there, but also there are the reflections of a whole ton of nasty sort of monsters. So Galmaraz starts sort of uh, working out the maze. He starts threatening the maze. He's like, oh, if you don't give my... No, nah, <laughs> I shouldn't talk like that. But he's like, um, you know, he starts working out and the maze is trying to stop him. So the maze starts to disgorge uh, a lot of the bad things that it has trapped in it. And of course, this maze has trapped everything for millions of years, or eons, I should say. Um, so all manner of crap is in there. Um, so Galmaraz, like the, the thrice blessed that came in with him, that small band, they're sort of getting besieged by these monsters and, and, and fighting the bad guys. Galmaraz is about to go down and help them, and then all of a sudden, holy shit, two freaking bloodthirsters come out of these mirrors. It's like one with the whip, one with the big two-headed axe. So you're kind of like, all right, well, let's kind of see how strong Galmaraz is, right? Because like he fought a giant and stuff before and, and smashed some beastman armies, but that doesn't really compare to two freaking bloodthirsters at once. So there's a scene in here where he's inside the maze, he's flying around and he's fighting two bloodthirsters at once. And uh, yeah, he solos them. He, um, he, he, he smashes them both. And he kind of does it, I want to say, fairly easy. Um, so that's a, a pretty good testament to his power, I suppose. Um, after defeating the bloodthirsters and the foes that were coming you know, at them out of their mirrors, they do manage to crack the maze and break the maze and, um, and, and sort of break the thrice blessed out. Um, so now all of a sudden we're in a situation where we've got Galmaraz and he's leading a storm host of the thrice blessed. Um, <laughs> and this is when Thrall just says, oh, you know, now I've got all these shards and stuff. You know what I can do? I can just teleport us all straight into the prismatic king's chamber. I'm like, wow, that was a way to circumvent like a whole story. But um, all right, so they got led into the the eerie, you know, which was just a trap, right? And then they got sucked into a trap into the um, the 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 freaking maze. And now all of a sudden, Thrall's going to teleport them into the prismatic king's lair. It sounds like another trap to me, but uh, who knows? So off they go. Um, I think he kind of says, oh, but I can't take you all. I need, only can take a select through a few or something like that. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty fucking average. And so he gets uh, Galmaraz and a bunch of other heroes. And, um, well, it's, no, it's not a bunch of other heroes. He has a basic small army with him. And they teleport into the throne room of the Prismatic King. And um, there, lo and behold, sitting on a throne at the end is like a giant Lord of Change. Right, no surprise there. I'm pretty sure everyone was expecting the Prismatic King to be a Lord of Change. Kind of makes sense. So they start fighting their way through the hordes. And to be honest with you, it's very much the same sort of boring, generic sort of battle where, you know, beastmen upon the thousands, or not the thousands, but, you know, the ever pressing, cr pressing crush of the beastmen. And Galmaraz smote them aside one after one with his, you know, it's just like the continuous fighting through hordes and fighting through shit and and there's nothing creative or imaginative or terribly, or terribly exciting about that battle. You know, they're fighting their way through through the Prismatic King and, and I'm just like, fuck, this is boring, get on with it. Um, so they kill the Prismatic King, but they didn't, but they didn't really kill his soul, right? So they kill the Prismatic King's body. Then it turns out that Thrall, the wizard that was with them the whole time, was actually, like, the, has the soul of the Prismatic King. And then they find how that he's a betrayer. They kind of smite him as well. And the Prismatic King says, as I'm going, he says, I don't know why he would do this, right? It, that would be, I, I don't know why I do this. But one of the whole things that's been going on throughout this, um, this story is, of course, the location of a realm gate. The Prismatic King is holding the location of a realm gate. Many people thought it was in the maze. I think the Thrice Blessed thought it was in the maze, and that's why they went into the maze to try and capture this um, uh, this realm gate. And then, so, as the Prismatic King's spirit is dying, and, like, Thrall's body is decaying, and the Lord of Change's spirit is, is disappearing back into the ether, he says... Do you, you want to know where this gate is? I'll tell you where the gate is, right? It's amongst one of you. 
I have got the essence of the gate and I have forged it into a Stormcast Eternal. And the Stormcast Eternal actually thinks he's one of you. So you'll never know which one it is. Moo ha 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 ha. And then he disappears. And all the Stormcasts looking around, they're like, oh, bruh, is it you? And they're like, nah, bruh, I know me, it's me. And they're like, oh, well, if it's not me, maybe it's you. And he's like, bruh, it's not me, it's must I know who I am, I am me. And then, you know, like, <laughs> and then Galmraz is like, oh, which one of you is it? It could be anyone. But it's just so lame because then he just flies up above them, looks at all these Stormcasts, says oh there it is because it's got like this glaring fucking shadow and 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 glint of a of a lord of change so it's like obvious as dog balls when once you're actually looking that is he goes down and it's the juice the juice the guy that's been with him the whole time his best mate and he's like hey juice you're it and juice is like nah bro i'm me like i'm the juice i i know i'm not no fucking realm gate and he's like nah it's you so he just smashes his head in and um and then the realm gate basically pops up and um and that's kind of it so the story was really shit i have to say it was really terrible and i think this whole book I, i've said this before when i did part one but um this book as a whole is my least favorite book in the whole series um Oh, God, I just don't know what to say. Now, I don't want you to think, though, that by any means I thought that the Realm Gate Wars as a, a book set was bad. I really enjoyed reading them. But this book, I just left scratching my head. I thought I couldn't believe it. You know, part one um, with Tylos Stormborn or whatever his name was, that you know, he's fighting these corn bloodhound in just this, this realm that didn't make sense, where just it was just ridiculous is what it was it was absolutely ridiculous and it didn't seem to fit into what i thought was a, a very interesting and progressing storyline you know like fostos bladestorm and hammerhand and you know they were getting back the uh the hammer and you know the introduction of the hallowed knights or um you know i thought it was i, I liked where everything was going we were learning these characters and they were intricate to the progression of the story and then this ha this book came along and it was just sort of nothing so we had that and then we had um part two and part two i suppose makes a bit more sense being like the hammers of sigma you know being galmaraz and we were introduced to galmaraz and i think um it was just like when they were planning out the storyboard they said we need a short story to introduce galmaraz and show the readers his power right we need a way to introduce him so someone just bang out a short story um, that will do that and we'll tack it on the end of this book called Hammers of Sigma or or they said oh you know we've got this whole book that was written by this guy that's kind of shit and doesn't really make sense so maybe we can if we combine these two together it has some sort of purpose that's just what I felt um, I've yeah I just sort of it, it didn't really sort of work with me and then so the writer who wrote this part too I can probably find out who it is the authors Darius Hinks um and then C L Werner's No, nah, don't know who either of those blokes are. But um yeah, he's like, What am I gonna do? I've got to write this book, I've got a deadline, it's like a month. Oh shit, what am I gonna do? And he sat down and watched Conan and <laughs> then the second one was like, I'm just kinda gonna copy that because Galmaris can be like Conan. That's a classic story. Um I'm happy to move on to the next books, folks. I, I really am. The next one is the Call of Archaeon, book four. And it is purely about chaos. And a lot of my sentiment about this book, The Hammers of Sigma, people actually had about the um, the Call of Archaeon, but I personally enjoyed that book. That was one of my most favorite books. So I can't wait to talk about it and tell you about it. So once again, folks, this was just a quick overview. Just want to tell you sort of what's happened in the storyline, what's the progression in the Realm Gate Wars and where we're heading. And then everyone can kind of be up to date as well. So Galmaraz is here, folks. They've taken some more realm gates, and um, that's really all this this book did. It didn't really progress anything else much. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll have the next installment out shortly.